Good afternoon. Would you please be seated? Well, you are now. Thank you. I'm Jeffrey Purdy, and for the past 16 years, I've had the honor and privilege to serve as a scout executive of the Buckskin Council. I would like to thank everyone here on behalf of the officers, executive board, staff, leaders, parents, and youth for your support and commitment to scouting in the Buckskin Council and for attending today's celebration. I want to express my sincere appreciation and heartfelt thanks to our friends of scouting and luncheon chairman for his servant leadership, energy, empowerment, integrity, and vision, which has brought us to this very special moment in time. It's my pleasure to introduce our luncheon chairman and master of ceremony for today's event, Tom Haywood. Jeff, thank you very much, and welcome, everyone. What a beautiful day in a beautiful place with beautiful people. Um, ex I'm excited to be here today. I hope all of you are, too. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the 2024 Buckskin Council Boy Scouts of America Leadership Gifts Luncheon. This is, this is an unbelievable place to hold a luncheon. Many of you have commented this needs to become the new permanent home, uh, Marty, so, uh, so we're going to look forward to that if that happens. And uh, uh, Marty Roth, the president of UC, is our host here today, and I'm going to invite Marty to the podium to say a few words of welcome. Marty? Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the University of Charleston. Um, it's our pleasure to uh, host this event in the H. Bernard Senior, H. Bernard Worley Senior Arena, which is part of the Martha and Russell Worley Innovation Center. So a lot of innovation happens every day and has happened for decades here at the University of Charleston. And a lot of that innovation has been fueled by the generosity and the vision of the Worley family. So we're very honored to be able to host the event here today. Uh, as many of you are seeing in the newspaper and on the news and so forth, uh, lots of tension, lots of issues, lots of controversy in higher education today. Uh, fortunately for Gordon Gee and Eric Cage, who's here today, and other West Virginia University presidents, knock on wood, we haven't had a lot of those same issues here. But it, thank you. But in thinking about this event and the incredibly great work that the Boy Scout, Boy Scout Association does with our youth every day and every year, incorporating core values of respect and civility, and reverence, and friendliness. As educators, we appreciate that so much, as it really does shape the types of students that we want to be able to work with at institutions of higher learning. So I want to thank all of the Boy Scout volunteers, all of those who serve on the board, and all of those who contribute to the great work that the Boy Scout Association does each and every day. So I want you to uh, enjoy this great event. Don't be a stranger to the University of Charleston. We're looking forward to hosting Symphony Sunday uh, on June 2nd and Wine and Jazz a few Saturdays later. And you are always welcome to the many different events that we hold here at the University of Charleston. Thanks so much, and back to Tom. Thank you very much, Dr. Roth, uh, for your leadership in our community and for your hospitality here today and keeping this campus open to our entire community at all times. It's a very special place, and we all consider it our place. Thank you. So um, at this time, I would like to invite Eagle Scout Sarah Dudley con to conduct our uh, flag ceremony, uh, the posting of the colors with the Eagle Scouts and Scouts from Troop 31, which is located at Baptist Temple here in Charleston. Following the presentation of the colors, Eagle Scout Maverick King will give the invocation for today's luncheon. Sarah. Thank you. I would like to, sorry, good afternoon. Will the audience please arise for the presentation of the colors?
Color guard, attention. Color guard, advance. Color guard, post the colors. Color guard, scout, salute. Audience, please join me in placing your hand on your heart for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Would you please remain standing for the invocation? As we come together this day as a community, civic and business leaders, we want to give you thanks. We thank you for this wonderful city and beautiful state in which we live. Thank you for the food you provide for our nourishment and the many blessings you have given each of us and our families. We thank you for this wonderful opportunity you have given us to have an impact in the lives of the young men and women in our communities through the scouting program. We ask that you enrich our minds so that we may come together to develop our leaders of tomorrow. We ask this in your name. Amen. All right, thank you very much, Sarah, Maverick, and to the, uh, uh, Troop 31. So now, please be seated. Enjoy your lunch. Uh, we'll resume the program at 1225. I have strict marching orders from Larry and Jeff, so enjoy. So good afternoon. I hope you're enjoying your lunches. Please continue to eat um, and uh, begin our program. So I'd like to begin, first of all, by thanking uh, our great team of vice chairs, uh, some of whom are here today, some of whom cannot be here today. Uh, Kelly Castleberry, Art King, David Mills, Lyle Smith, Andy Teeter, Diane Strong, Clifton Clark, Andy Barker, Jeff Sandine. And I'd also like to thank Mr. Patrick O'Malley, here to my left, chair-elect, who will lead this campaign next year. The vice chairs have had exceptional captains and team members who helped make this a very successful campaign. As my CFO often reminds me, this stuff just doesn't happen by itself. It takes a team. Let's give them all a big round of applause. So what really, of course, makes the campaign a success is all of you. If not for the businesses and the individual contributions, uh, the Buckskin Council would not be able to deliver the remarkable leadership development program of scouting to young people across our region. So please give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> the Buckskin Council serves thousands of youth and leaders in 40 counties. In West Virginia, Ohio, Virginia, and Kentucky. Just think about that. And it's a challenging region in many, many respects in terms of some of the forces at play, and, and it's, a, it's a place we know and love dearly, right? So it's really important. The council provides services, camps, programs, training, awards, resources, facilities, and staff to deliver a scouting program each and every year. And so the success of the Friends of Scouting campaign culminating in this luncheon in securing, uh, securing the fiscal stability of the council allows those volunteers to deliver more scouting to more young people. So um, you're all maybe wondering, how did we do this year? Well, we put up some really big numbers. You all put up some really big numbers. And I'm very pleased to announce I have a big check with big numbers right behind me. And we raised, so far, I've actually got two contributions this morning, and operators are standing by, continue to dial in. So far, we have raised $555,000. 
Thank you for your generosity, for your hard work. And at this time, I'd like to present a check to Buckskin Council President John McGee on behalf of all of you who've made a gift this year. John? Tom, I can't thank you enough for you and your team's leadership for such an outstanding campaign. Thank you to all of you for your participation in this year's Friends of Scouting uh, campaign. The, the dollars that you and your companies have made available provide the essential facilities, tools, training, support to deliver the program of scouting throughout the Buckskin Council. To all of you, and on behalf of <coughs> The families, the scouts, the volunteers that comprise the Buckskin Council are very hearty. Thank you. John, thank you very much. So let me get back to my program. So, John, you should know, John has been really active in his role as president and leader of the Buckskin Council. And so now we get on with the awards. This is the fun part of the program, recognizing uh, our honorees. To begin, I'm going to call to the uh, podium Patrick O'Malley, who's going to give uh, our first Good Scouter Award presentation. Patrick. All right. Thank you, Tom. And uh, being vice chair for next year and the amount that Tom just shared, I'll be standing with the basket outside the door as you all leave so I can go ahead and take money for next year. So uh, it's a big act to follow, but a great number uh, and awesome for the Buckskin Council. So with that, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I have the great fortune um, to present our Corporate Good Scouter Award this year. Um, we started this in... 2022, uh, as most of you may know. Uh, I'm grateful and humbled that uh, Truist was actually chosen as the first corporate good scouter. Uh, we actually welcomed um, Canal Stone Company last year to that family. And so now that we have a group of corporate honorees, um, we can kind of allow past honorees to present uh, to our future honorees, and so that's really why I'm standing here uh, today with you all. So when you think of the kind of corporate good scouter and some of the values that are important uh, to this honoree, you think of commitment to the community where they work and they live, uh, relationships that are built on trust and accountability, uh, willingness to collaborate and innovate with a focus on improving quality of life. And so I think this year uh, we really couldn't ask for a better honoree. So without further ado, if I could ask you to turn your attention to the video boards, we'll have a tribute for our 2024 Corporate Good Scouter. Incova's impact on the Buckskin Council has been tremendous. You know, it takes resources to deliver the scouting program to youth. And INCOVA has been a consistent, long-term supporter of scouting, and the youth of our communities have been a direct beneficiary of their generosity. I think INCOVA Insurance epitomizes the type of organization that should be recognized with an award like the Good Scouter Award. Their community involvement, they have a long history of supporting not only their employees and their agents, but the community as a whole. So when you think about their corporate values and scouting values, I think it's a great choice. We here at Incova are very excited to earn the Buckskin Corporate Good Scouter Award. It ratifies or validates what we've been trying to do throughout West Virginia with our foundation for the last 15 years. West Virginia is very important to the history of Incova the Incova subsidiary Brick Street, which many people will still remember, started here in West Virginia. And a lot of our success 
was due to the success we had in West Virginia. So we feel that we need to pay it forward when it comes to our charitable foundation and supporting the West Virginia communities across the state who have been so good to Bridge Street and now Incova over the years. Incova's presence in West Virginia can be felt everywhere. Uh, you'll see us in all types of different areas. You'll see us in um, holiday settings with uh, donations to various charities, animal shelters. We've been involved with Habitat for Humanity. You'll see us at Marshall and WVU football, basketball, sporting events, scouting. We seem to be everywhere. Incova is all about helping others. You'll see it from our policyholders, through our employees, through the community. The same thing went with scouting. It was always a matter of what can we do to help the community, what can we do to be better, be prepared, which is kind of a theme that you see constantly, and especially with insurance. I mean, if you think about it, be prepared is kind of a central theme for insurance, and obviously that's what scouting was all about for me. Incova is a family. The sense of community, the sense of involvement uh, is just amazing in what we do with all different organizations. But having scouts out there and having Incova work with scouts, I believe is one of the best things that, that we could have happen in this community. Well, great job on the video. Uh, I think that pretty much says it all. So if you could, um, I would like to present this year's Corporate Good Scouter Award to Encova Insurance. And here today to accept the award, award is President and CEO T.J. Obrachta. <clears throat> Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Tom. Marty, thanks for opening up this great facility uh, as, as a wonderful venue, venue here today. I look at that video and it confirms once again of why I have a face for radio. Um, it's very disturbing. I live in Columbus and I've lived there for seven years, but as I stand here today, it's, it's, it's nice to be home. Uh, West Virginia is home for me. West Virginia is home for Brick Street. And West Virginia is a critical part of the Encova organization. So it's nice to be here uh, today with you. I look at uh, here to my right and I see Tom Haywood and I think it was about this time 19 years ago, Tom, uh, that Tom and Mark Montleone and I sat in the conference room at Bowles Rice and sketched out the initial articles of incorporation and bylaws for what became Brick Street. And it's been a remarkable 19 years. Uh, and we had a lot of high expectations for whatever we were creating back then, but I don't know that we ever really envisioned creating a company now with $1.2 billion of annual revenue and about $4.5 billion of assets. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a true success story, a true West Virginia success story, and we should all be very proud of that outcome. Brick Street, uh, a few years into its, its existence, created the Brick Street Foundation. And when, when we did that, we wanted that foundation to be committed to children and educating children, providing health care to children, and things of that nature. And when you look at the Boy Scout mission, it aligns perfectly with the Incova Foundation goals, which is to prepare children to make moral and ethical decisions throughout their life. That's the Boy Scout mission. So that aligns perfectly with the Incova Foundation's goal of assisting children through their educational and other endeavors, particularly here in West Virginia. We look forward to continuing to work with uh, the Boy Scouts, the Buckskin Council, and now Scouting America, uh, as I understand the rebranding to be, so that's wonderful. Uh, thank you for letting us be here today. Thank you for this wonderful recognition, and please enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. TJ, thank you so much. Uh, uh, thanks for that story. TJ is really the one that made that success story happen. He continues to do it to this day, so it's wonderful. Um, we thanks to Encova. I know you have many folks here today for all that you do and your charitable uh, um, uh, work in our communities. 
Um, I want to change hats now uh, and go from Master of Ceremonies uh, to presenter of the next Good Scouter Award. Uh, this year's award's a little bit different than something we've ever done. And we've historically done individuals, and in more recent years, we've done couples. This year, we're doing a family. And so this was an interesting exercise to figure out how to do a family, but it was a joy and a delight because of the family that we get to recognize and are here to honor and recognize today. So uh, truly, uh, the Worley family, their grandfather is who they want to see honored and recognized at this event. Uh, is it, it, all of our lives are richer for their lives. So just as we did with Patrick, I'm gonna start with a video then say a few words and introduce our next speaker. So let's roll the video. My name is John Wells III. I earned my Eagle Scout badge in the summer of 1975. Today, I'm the owner and president of Wells Home Furnishings in Charleston. Scouting taught me to be the best mentor I can be, learning from my scout masters and through my business to care about the people that I mentor every day and set the example that I can set on a, on a daily basis. I'm also proud to say that my three sons are also Eagle Scouts. My name is Evan Cheney. I earned my Eagle Scout in 2002, and today I am a flight paramedic in the United States Army and I also serve as a senior medevac OCT at the Joint Multinational Readiness Center in Hohenfels, Germany. Scouting taught me life lessons, skills, perseverance, overall just ways to be of benefit to the global community. My name is Chris Shreve. I earned my Eagle Scout in 2002, and today I am the chief engineer for the largest EOIR sensor development program within Raytheon's Advanced Technology Department. Scouting taught me quite a few practical skills, but most importantly, scouting taught me how to be a leader. Scouting gave me the opportunity to learn to lead my peers. My name is Alyssa Preston, and I was the first female Eagle Scout in the Buckskin Council. Now I'm a senior biology major at Moorhead State University. Scouting taught me to always be prepared, and throughout scouting, I had the opportunity to meet new people and experience what it truly meant to lead. My name is Bradford Hurt. I earned my Eagle Scout in 2021, and today I'm a cadet at the United States Air Force Academy. Scouting gave me the opportunity to interact with a lot of people that I wouldn't have had an opportunity to otherwise. It'll help you decide what you wanna do later in life, what your passions are, Merit badges taught me that I was interested in engineering. I can't think of a better leadership organization that exists to teach children and kids and young adults how to be better people, how to be leaders, how to contribute back and give back to scouting as they get older. That's why I'm still here. Scouting gave so much to me when I was a, a kid that I feel like I have to give back and give other kids that same opportunity. The roll call is impressive and extensive. Since its founding in 1919, the Buckskin Council has done its best to shape character and mold leaders. During that span of time, more than 6,000 youth in this council have earned the rank of Eagle Scout. It is the highest and most prestigious achievement a scout can earn. It carries special significance, not only in scouting, but also in school, business, and the community. Not all scouts earn their eagle, but all scouts become better citizens. It has definitely made a significant difference in my son's life, you know, from the wild, shy, um, little boy to now a strong, confident man, or young man, um, scouting has just been constant learning experience. They're always learning new things. They're always doing something either with the community or with their group. I've learned that to be a good leader, you'd have to be confident. 
in both yourself and others. You'd probably have to know quite a lot of stuff. Confident in your speaking as well. Within the borders of the Buckskin Council, more than half a million youth have participated in scouting. In some families, there are generational ties. There is one family, however, whose tie to scouting and to this council is unmatched. The family patriarch, H.B. Worley Sr., was only seven when his mom died and 11 when his father passed away. Shortly afterwards, in 1911, his older brother Howard organized the first Boy Scout troop in West Virginia. And H.B., known as Bernard or Bernie, was his first recruit, making him the first Boy Scout in West Virginia. Bernard married Elizabeth Hersher and became the brother-in-law to Jerry McJunkin. Together, Bernard and Jerry founded McJunkin Supply Company in 1921. Bernard served as president from 1946 until 1964 and led the company's growth, becoming a major worldwide supplier to the oil and gas industry. Today, that company is called MRC Global and is a Fortune 500 public company. Bernard and Elizabeth had two sons, H. Bernard Jr. and Russell, both of whom were also Boy Scouts. The Worley family has been generous to the Kanawha Valley. Their philanthropy helped to underwrite the new Kanawha County Library and several projects at the University of Charleston, including the Innovation Center, and the school's athletic arena. Their descendants have continued the family's ties to scouting as the major donor of the council's headquarters, which is named in honor of the family patriarch, the H. Bernard Worley Sr. Scout Leadership Service Center. And their support goes beyond that. The family's contribution have allowed the council to fulfill its mission, to give young people the chance to have fun gain confidence, and become leaders who live the Scout Oath and the Scout Law. A good Scout uh, is fairly easy to define. Uh, it's right there in the, the Scouting Law. A Scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. A uh, good Scout isn't always all of these things, but a good scout is someone who strives to be all of these things all of the time. A good scout in my mind is somebody that uh, treats all, all others uh, with dignity and respect. Being a good scout is being a good person. Being a good scout is not just about the outdoors. Being a good scout is being a good citizen. It's being a person that others can look up to. It's being someone that sets an example. To the supporters of scouting, I wanna say thank you because you have not only helped me, but you've helped other young minds understand what the world is like, understand who they are, understand who their friends are, and help them understand more about our society and the world. And it's also helped them get out there and have more fun and have safe adventures. For their generosity and their part in the scouting lore of the Buckskin Council, we are proud to present the 2024 Good Scouter Award to the Worley family. So now it's my great privilege. Steve, if you would come up on behalf of the family, I'm going to present an award. I'll say a couple more things, then I'm going to let you speak. But from a very grateful Boy Scout Council and a very grateful community, Steve Worley, Thank the Worley family. So as you can imagine, so, so the values you heard, the scout values, uh, the whole family exhibits and lives every day. It's pretty interesting how that's carried down through the generations from, from H.B. Worley Sr. Um, so one manifestation of that is self-effacing and humble. And so they all refused to speak. It, this was really hard to figure out how to get them to say anything at all about themselves. You'll notice there's not a picture at all of the current generation at their insistence. The focus was 
uh, on, on the grandfather and on scouting. So that's who they are. But uh, I do want to recognize we do have statuettes for each of our honorees, and there are many, and I, I, I can't let this event occur without mentioning each of them by name, even though they insist on not coming to the podium. So this is in your program, but we're honoring today uh, H. Bernard Worley Sr. and his descendants, H. B. Worley Jr. and Russell Worley, his two sons, Bernie and Cecilia Worley, Steve and Laura Worley, Gaines and Annie Worley, Michael Worley, Beth Worley and Matt Miller, Kate and Peter Kend, Chilton and Cody Miller, and Tony and Len Zandy, as well as in COVA Insurance here, but the Worley family. Now, you say some of them are not here. I just want to uh, let you all know, I should have probably told you this earlier, this event is being live streamed, so I hope you're on your, your best behavior, because somewhere across this country, we think some of the other honorees are watching. We certainly hope so. So congratulations also to all of you. And with that, Steve, I'm going to call you to the podium for a few remarks. Steve Worley. Well, we had quite a discussion on who would speak, and you can tell I already don't know how to handle the microphone, uh, and I drew the short straw. Uh, but it is my pleasure to be here and represent our family, and uh, we truly appreciate being here today. It's very special to our family to be recognized. It's also special to share this day with Encova. They are a terrific role model for business in the community. They step up to the plate repeatedly when things are needed, and so it's, it's an honor to share it with TJ and his company. Uh, it's also an honor to have Dr. Gordon Gee here. He has a very busy schedule, and we're very pleased that he would take the time to, to uh, speak to us as well. For the Worley family, as has been said in the video and Tom has said, we want to honor the person that is responsible for us being able to sit up here today. And that is Bernard Worley Sr., who was a first Boy Scout in West Virginia. And some of you have heard his story before and heard a little bit here, so bear with me. I'm going to tell a brief history of his life. And it is a story about the American dream. Because if anyone lived the American dream, it was Bernard Worley. So I, I looked up on the internet I, the definition of the American dream, and I found one from 1931 that I thought was appropriate. And I'm going to read it to you. And the definition was, life should be better and richer and fuller for everyone, with opportunity for each, according to ability or achievement, regardless of social class or circumstances of birth. I think that's a pretty good definition. Our grandfather's dream was to pro provide a better, richer, and fuller life for his family, his business and employees, his church, and his community. He was born in 1898 and was a lifelong resident of Charleston, West Virginia. He grew up quite poor, and it was mentioned in the video, he was an orphan at 11 years of age. His older sister then raised him from there. <laughs> he became, at 13, the first Boy Scout in West Virginia in 1911. And in two days, that'll be 113 years to the day. Uh, there is no doubt in my mind that the values, the ethics, the leadership skills, the commitment to give back, the hard work ethics that was taught to him and that he learned from the Boy Scouts were certainly the foundation for his future success. He used to say, you don't get credit for being honest. That's just the way you're supposed to be. That sounds like a Boy Scout to me. Uh, he could not go to college. He couldn't afford to it. It left, led to a lifelong love and support of higher education as he felt that was the gateway to opportunity. 
1921, he started his business with his partner, Jerry McJunkin. And at that time, he married Elizabeth Herser. And they say behind every successful man is a strong woman. And she was certainly that. She was actually a piece of work, to be honest. Uh, and uh, she was in instrumental in every aspect of, of his success, and he couldn't have done it without her. Also in 1920, they had two sons, Henry and Russell, that were born four years apart. In the 1930s, their business survived the Great Depression, and it started growing significantly. In the 1940s, um, he started a very generous profit-sharing plan for his em employees. It was quite novel at the time because he wanted to give back to those that had helped him succeed in his life. He believed he wanted a better and richer and fuller life for each of his employees and their families. Also in the 1940s, he sent both his sons, Henry and Russell, to college, not only to college, but to Princeton University where they graduated. I'm sure it was one of the proudest moments of his life. Uh, Henry married Helen Donhout from Des Moines, Iowa and had four children. Russell married Martha Gaines from Fayetteville, West Virginia and had five children. Russ and Henry grew up together and worked together their entire lives. They were also quite successful in the business. They virtually lived their lives together and they were as close as two brothers could be. That closeness had a significant impact on their children. So we as brothers, sisters, and cousins grew up together as well and we felt that closeness. It was special. In the 1950s, our grandparents started their family foundation. It was called the Elizabeth H. and H. B. Worley Foundation. And they were particularly committed to higher education and gave scholarships to those that could not afford to go to college. And actually, more, at, at the time, Morris Harvey College, where we are today, was whom they gave the scholarships for. Our grandfather passed away in 1967 at the age of 69. And as you heard in the video, the company today is called MRC Global. They are a worldwide public company listed on the New York Stock Exchange with almost 3,000 employees. And thank you for the employees that are here today and have worked at McJunk and I've seen a lot of people here. And it's a pleasure to see all of you. Um, so you can see why I say that he lived the American dream, I believe. He was, had success, not just financial success, which he taught all of us to respect, but he had success in life with his family and with his community, et cetera. In fact, his legacy to his family and his community, I think, is amazing. Uh, to his family, we are now into the fifth generation, fairly recently, and we are all living the American dream, all because of him and his hard work. Our lives are better and richer and fuller and full of opportunities that a lot of people only dream of. We are truly blessed as a family, but as our responsibility to give back to those that are less fortunate. His legacy to his community is amazing as well. The foundation he started has now grown into two foundations, one run by the Russell Worley family, one run by the Henry Worley family. This has been very beneficial to many organizations in our community, and it's always started by our grandfather. So here we are 57 years after his death, and we are still honoring his contributions to our community and to the Boy Scouts who had such a significant impact on his life. 
Hopefully you can see why we want to honor the first Boy Scout in West Virginia and the difference he made for our family and for this community. We hope in the future that as young adults, young people join the Boy Scouts with dreams of their own, perhaps they will be inspired by the story of the first Boy Scout of West Virginia and know that dreams can and do come, come true. I'd like to uh, give a special thanks to Tom Haywood. He's a very close friend of the Worley family, always has been, and uh, he's worked very hard on this, and we can't thank you enough. You know, I had someone tell me one time, there has to be five Tom Haywoods. There's no way he can be everywhere he is. So, Tom, I don't know where the other four are. I'm sure it's somewhere where they're doing something worthwhile, but we're glad you're here today. Uh, and also, Jeff Purdy and the Boy Scouts and everyone that put this event together. I mean, this is, this is quite an undertaking, and uh, we really appreciate it. And I also always like to thank my wife, Laura, who helped me with my remarks and is so special to to me and our family as a whole. Uh, we did have one, uh, be, one extra benefit from uh, being named this. We finally got together again as a family last night. You know, we all get busy with our schedules. I'm sure it happens to you. And we had a nice evening and told some stories that I don't have time to tell you, but there were some funny ones that I didn't even know about. So we, we thank you for having that opportunity. And uh, but let's remember that today, the purpose of today is to support the mission of the Boy Scouts. And by your attendance here and the donations that were made, you are all a part of that. And we can't thank you enough because that is why we are here today. And in the spirit of giving back, I want to leave you with my favorite quotation. And it is, when you seek happiness for yourself, it will always elude you. When you seek happiness for others, you will find it yourself. God bless everyone and thank you. So uh, wonderful words. Thanks for sharing that story so eloquently, so wonderfully. And uh, uh, let's hear it one more time for H.B. Worley Sr. and the entire Worley family. One more time. Yeah. So uh, what a legacy. Um, uh, and I would invite all of you, I know there was some, some gathering and renewing of relationships before, we, before the luncheon started. Please, uh, I think they're going to be here for a while after lunch. Please take some time as you might and, and wish and uh, share, share your congratulations and maybe some stories as well with our honorees here today. So now it's my great honor to bring to the podium uh, an Eagle Scout, an educator, a fellow lawyer, an author, president of WVU, Dr. Gordon Gee. Mr. President. Um, as you can tell, <laughs> is there some way we can lower this thing? I hope so. Gosh, how, tall, how tall are you? <clears throat> well, anyway, I, I apologize. You know, I, I have to tell a funny story, which was the fact that I was, uh, just recently I was at a, uh, an event and a woman came up to me and she said, she said, oh, she said, are you the president of Westford University? And I said, well, yes, I am. She said, well, you're so small. Uh, I can't help it. That was how I was born, and uh, and uh, and it is it is that. So I am honored to be here. 
I'm honored. And Marty, thank you for sharing this beautiful facility with us. We're delighted. To, I think we're all delighted to be here. And I know that there have been a lot of great uh, things happening in this facility. And it, it is uh, a beautiful campus. So saying all of that, I also want to note that um, Tom Haywood, we, you just said something wonderful about Tom, Steve. I'm going to tell you uh, uh, something about Tom. Tom, on Friday morning, will receive two honorary degrees from West Virginia University. Um, the only individual in the history of our 150 years of our university to receive two honorary degrees at the same time. So, Tom, congratulations to you. Uh, don't screw it up now, okay? I, I think that that's important. So, uh, Now, uh, speaking of commencement, uh, our commencements uh, are sort of a marathon. 16 of them, 7,000 students. Uh, I'll be in traction by the end of it. I want you to know that. Uh, but uh, one of the things that I thought I'd do, if you don't mind, Tom, because, and you can see these are true letters. Uh, I receive letters every year from parents about uh, their kids graduating. So I thought I'd just share a couple of them with you. Uh, Dear Dr. Gee, my son has had a remarkable four years at West Virginia University. He has learned a great deal. As for me, what I learned is that money is not everything, but it certainly keeps you in track, uh, keep, keeps you in touch with your children. So I think that that's probably pretty good. Uh, this one, dear President Gee, we are so very grateful for graduation day and that it has finally arrived. My wife and I, though, want to be fair about West Virginia University uh, than the fact that you charged us tuition. But I figure any institution willing to take my son for four years deserves every penny it can get. <laughs> And then this one, I am absolutely delighted with the remarkable education that my son received at West Virginia University. It was a great experience for him and for our family. I have only one complaint. The whole educational system does not seem, uh, or does seem unfair. You send your kids to college for four years, and what happens? Not only does it cost you money, but you get the damn kid back as well. So uh, <laughs> there you go. So anyway, anyway, it, it's wonderful to be with all of you today, and uh, thank you very much. I, I want to say I am especially pleased to, in, uh, to join with these two great uh, folks. Uh, first of all, Encova. We all know that uh, Encova has made it a remarkable, remarkable um, uh, contribution to our communities and and uh, and TJ and I were just talking and TJ thank you for your comments but we were just talking the most recent uh, commitment to West Virginia University was to our Rockefeller Neuroscience Institute which is a fabulous place but they made it better just by that uh, work and and um, and of course they're working very hard on Alzheimer's for which I'm grateful I might just note note and uh, and of course, to the Worley family, what can I say about the Worley family? They are, the, uh, Steve, I think you said the fifth generation, as a matter of fact, which is, uh, which is remarkable in and of itself. But here you are, a great family. I knew Russ and, uh, and Martha very well during my first tenure at university. And, uh, and Martha came and visited me a couple of times at, um, at Vanderbilt when I was chancellor. And I had such a great time with her. But she was very instrumental in the legislature of making certain that we were able to solidify our academic medical center, and Tom knows that. So we will, as a family, to have that kind of generosity and capacity as a family to stay together, I just want to thank you for that. And, and, and I want you to know that uh, it is very special. Now, um, I, um, yes, I am a, an Eagle Scout. I'm also on the executive committee of the National Boy Scouts. We just voted uh, yesterday to, uh, to change the name from Boy Scouts of America um, to uh, Scouting, uh, uh, Scouting America, uh, and I think that it is very appropriate because of the fact that we now have over 200,000 young women who are members of Scouting, and we have a number of those young women who are becoming Eagle Scouts. In fact, women are becoming Eagle Scouts faster than the, than, than the young men, and we, we, we celebrate that. So it's, uh, it, it's a celebration for all of us. So I... I, I grew up in a very small town. I was at Clay, in Clay County, Clay County High School today. That's the reason I was a little bit late. And, uh, and uh, Roger Hanshaw was there, and he's told everyone that uh, I grew up in a small town. I really did. A town of 2,000 uh, on the Utah-Colorado border. I'd never seen a Mormon or a non-Democrat until I was 18. And so uh, uh, it was, it was, it was uh, a, a, very, a very small community. Um, it was the largest city, though, between Salt Lake City and Denver, which is the same distance as between Charleston, South Carolina, and Boston, Massachusetts. So I grew up in rural America, and uh, I'm grateful for that. So I had the church, 
I had 4-H and I had scouting. And scouting uh, was something that was very special to me. Um, we, 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 by the way, did not have a movie theater. Um, we, we, didn't, uh, we did not uh, have television. Television was not available. We did have a library and I read all four books, but it was just, uh, it, 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 it was such a wonderful way to grow up, but scouting was so special to me. Um, and so working to um, earn the rank of Eagle, Eagle Scout taught me that goal setting, uh, perseverance, resiliency, and certainly taught me the rewards of leadership. Uh, like all of you, I believe that, um, that our youth need to acquire these skills, and it is more acute than ever right now. Um, at, at our university, we believe so strongly in scouting and the pen potential of uh, positive youth development that we have a strategic partnership with the Summit Bechtel Reserve. Let me just remind all of you that the Boy Scouts that Scouting USA or Scouting America has now made a major commitment to West Virginia. The largest outdoor recreation facility in North America, if not in the world, and the best, is 14,000 acres south of, uh, of Beckley, West Virginia, the Bechtel Summit Reserve. I urge all of you to come. This is where all of their uh, jamborees will be held. They had the, held the World Jamboree there uh, several years ago. They just held a national jamboree. Another one will be coming in 2026. That brings a lot of opportunity and a lot of people and a lot of recognition to West Virginia. But scouting has made a major commitment to West Virginia, as has West Virginia to scouting. So working with scouts uh, is important to me because throughout more than uh, four decades in higher education. As you heard, I have a very unstable employment pattern. Um, I have seen that students uh, with a scouting background tend to succeed academically and as campus leaders. Surveys have shown that scouts, and I wanted, I, I decided to gather, gather all these data together. Surveys have shown that scouts are more likely to earn mostly A's in school, to graduate from high school, and to earn college degrees. Increasing educational attainment of course, is critically important for our nation. 335 million Americans, 1.4 billion Chinese, and 1.4 billion um, uh, uh, Indians, uh, on the basis of mass we lose. Only on the basis of education and an educated population do we preserve our democracy and we win. And scouting, I contend, is at the center of that. Uh, and scouting's core strength is one that society needs now more than, uh, than ever uh, because it is a commitment. It is a commitment to our democracy. And I must say that the past few years have taken an exceptional toll on, uh, on young people. Uh, when I was president of Ohio State about 12 years ago, we did a survey on, at a national level about um, uh, among college students, and one of the questions that was asked is, how, uh, how are you dealing with your mental health? About five to, five to 10 percent said that they thought that they had some mental health challenges. The latest survey, 75 percent said that they had mental health challenges. Uh, so um, according to the, to the latest Gallup poll, mental health challenges for Gen Z, this is the students we're educating right now, are different from past generations, while Many respondents reported feeling optimistic. That is tempered. That is absolutely tempered by the sense that they are not prepared for the future. They struggle. These young people struggle uh, with mental and emotional health. More than half say that they experience large, large amounts of anxiety. The increasing amount of time you spend on social media, as you well know, we have stopped talking to each other and we only talk by our thumbs. Um, it, is, it is a very difficult time that we face um, with young people. There's just a book that, that has come out about that very issue. Uh, anecdotally, many college professors have reported that today's students are less confident about approaching challenges and overcoming obstacles because they don't talk to each other, because they don't act with each other, that they don't build community. That's the reason that they lack confidence. Psychologists have studied how to build resilience in youth which we think is always very important, and their findings align remarkably with the very experiences that scouting brings to young lives. Let me just say that again. Uh, the psychological studies, the sociological studies, and scouting um, come together in so many powerful ways. Consider, for example, the importance of finding mentors. Think about that. Mentors, people who, who help you out, who, who uh, make one feel caring and safe, and, and uh, who are reliable adults who promote 
high expectations and, and can mitigate the impact of, uh, of young people. My, uh, my, uh, we only had one swimming pool in Vernal, Utah. It was at the, it was at the, um, it was at uh, the dinosaur, the dinosaur motel was the name of it. My scoutmaster was the my guy who owned the uh, owned the motel, and I hate to this day I hate swimming, and and life saving was horrible. I I I, uh, I don't count on me to save any lives in the water. I can assure you that. But I went there every day because he was such a great mentor. He opened up his pool, and he needed to close it down, but I hadn't quite re achieved it. So he uh, kept it open until. Finally, I struggled and got my merit badge. Now, that is a great mentor. Uh, research has also shown that meaningful service not only promotes happiness, but also improves academic performance. Meaningful service and academic performance. Young people gain competence and confidence and empathy and a sense of being part of something larger than themselves by helping others. That was just what uh, Steve quoted right there just a second ago. So youth volunteers are uh, also more motivated to succeed, more engaged with their school environment, and better able to cooperate with others, and more informed about current events. And when a safe environment is provided, our young people are given the opportunities to demonstrate autonomy and good decision-making, making them less likely to engage in risky behavior, like taking over campuses. Um, those who, to whom service is a family, um, is, is often finding themselves also about scouting as have, have the Whirlies. And, e and they report, because of scouting, even stronger bonds, family bonds, and I suspect that that is very much what, what you found as a family. So scouting has been providing such opportunities for generations. So no matter how bold we are, colleges and universities cannot meet all of society's needs. Universities, and Marty, I think you'd agree with this, universities and colleges are not Red Cross units. There is no substitute for good homes and good churches and good synagogues and good families. And scouting is very much a part of that. So to serve young people effectively, we must work together with one another, with business and industry, and COVA with business and industry, with government and with our communities. That is why scouting is such an exemplary program. It brings people together to produce real change. Although we face many challenges, and we face many challenges in this nation, a divided nation, a divided people, uh, we need to put more unum into pluribus, as a matter of fact. So our regions, young people, and, and this is one of the things I know because I educate, I've, I've been part of the education of a number of them. Our region's young people are diverse, they're collaborative, they're fearless, they're globally aware and entrepreneurial. They're absolutely determined to make a difference. This Appalachian culture is unique. It's as unique as the Hispanic culture, as the, as the African American culture, and we're blessed to be here with that uniqueness and that independence and that grit. So at our university, our young people have tremendous potential. Employers love our students. I'll just say that again. And Marty, I suppose that's what you find out all the time. Employers love our students. When I was the president of Brown, um, the Goldman Sachs stopped coming because they said the students had an expectation that we were supposed to pay, pay them for doing nothing. I said, well, I, we're, that doesn't quite work out that way. But employers love our students. And I believe it is because of the independent spirit of the people and the fundamentals of this mountaineer culture that we hold dear. So when our children reach their full potential, their trajectory, in my view, in this state is unlimited. There are as many, there are as many geniuses in West Virginia as there are in California, maybe more. But more importantly, we just need to tap into that potential. And you as scouting supporters are launching them on that very trajectory as role models, you are raising expectations. You are nurturing curiosity and wonder. Let me just say that again. You are nurturing curiosity and wonder. You are fostering creativity and artistic expression. You are promoting the ingenuity that leads to economic growth. And you are unleashing, you are unleashing by what you're doing today, by that 500 and what, $50,000? 
five, five, there you go, $555,000 that you've raised, you are unleashing the life-changing power of discovery one child at a time. So I'm honored to be here. Tom, I'm honored to be your friend. Steve and Laura and Bernie and all of the great family here, I'm honored to have your friendship. And thank you for your support of our university. And NCOVA, TJ, TK, uh, it's, it's, so, it's so wonderful to have you uh, as part of uh, this occasion. We appreciate you very much, TJ. Everyone have a great day. Thank you very much. You're good. I've got, I've got my remarks. Take what you need. <laughs> Gordon, thank you very much for your leadership, for your remarks, for you and for Lori both taking time out of your busy schedule to be here today. As a token of our appreciation, I'd like to present you with this beautiful Blinko glass vase inscribed with the Boy Scouts, the Buckskin Council Boy Scouts, now Scouting America. Thanks for your leadership of scouting, your leadership of West Virginia University and our state. We're all privileged to call you a friend. Thank, thank you. you. So um, I'm going to just wind things up here in a little bit, uh, and I'm going to just once again say, TJ uh, and Kova, thank you all so much for all that you do each day and every day. You're remarkable. You set the pace for philanthropy. We just deeply appreciate it. Thanks for all you do to, to continue to lead us forward. To the Worley family, uh, thank you all for your friendship, for all that your, your role model, you exhibit the values of not only your grandfather, but of scouts. Thank you sincerely for your example and your continuing generosity. Steve, your words are inspiring and well thought, uh, uh, well conceived. I'm sure H.B. Uh, Worley Sr. is very proud as he looks down today. Marty, I want to thank you very much for being our wonderful host. Dr. Gee, th thanks again for your thoughts. Um, so there's some other people just to thank. Uh, this doesn't just happen. We have a great team here at the Buckskin Council that works hard day in and day out, coordinating volunteers, making things happen. And that includes Jeff Purdy. That includes Larry Wonderly. Where's Becky Husted, Kelly Thaxton. Let's give them all a big round of applause. So the videos were done by Diana Sol Walco, motion master. She's in the back. If you like the videos, give it up to Diana. Thank you, Diana. So to bring us to a close, I would like to ask every person here today who earned the rank of Eagle Scout to please stand. I'm standing because I'm at the podium, but I'm not an Eagle Scout. Let's give them a round of applause. Now, everyone who has been a scout or who has scouts in your family past and present or children or grandchildren who are or uh, were scouts, please stand and stand even if you believe one of these people has touched your lives. And now I can stand. So. So I think you can see, thank you all very much, I think you can see just by looking around what an impact scouting makes. It's touched all of our lives. We are all very connected. We're blessed to be connected with one another. Thanks to all of you for your support, for being here today for this moment of celebration. Have a great day. Safe travels. Our, our convocation is adjourned. Thank you.